Coming up on Eagle Vision News, we have Gigi with the best Halloween costumes. New York Times reporter Ivan Penn visits campus. And we take a look at the first Biola Athletics game at full capacity. All this and more coming up on Eagle Vision News. Good evening and welcome to our fourth episode of Eagle Vision News. I'm Emily Coffey. And I'm Marlena Lang. Here are our top stories tonight. Pastor of a local Compton church was shot and killed last week Sunday. Pastor Reginald Moore served Christ Church in Compton for over 20 years. He was shot on the corner of Compton Boulevard and Dwight Avenue while walking to his car after Bible study. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Homicide Bureau is conducting an ongoing investigation to catch the unknown suspect and bring justice to Moore's family. That's all the information we have on this tragedy for now. In the latest update for the Russ shooting involving Alec Baldwin, there may be criminal charges on the table. While shooting Rust, a low-budget movie starring Alec Baldwin, a gun fired and killed Halnia Hutchins, a camera woman. Assistant Director Dave Halls handed the firearm to Baldwin, believing it to be unloaded. The gun was also said to be a prop gun, but it is an antique-era functioning weapon. The shot that issued from the gun resulted in Hutchins' death and one more injury on set, stopping the production for good. Now, as the investigation proceeds, it could result in criminal charges of involuntary manslaughter for producers. The investigation will proceed for up to 10 more weeks before the case is brought to court. This week, major storm patterns made their way down the west coast to a parched California, but the downpour wasn't enough to stop the drought. According to Mark Jackson, the National Weather Service's meteorologist in LA, it's, quote, going to take multiple weather systems like this to really have an impact on the drought, unquote. California is currently in a statewide drought with about 85% of the state in exceptional drought. Jackson told Eyewitness News that the state counts on three main sources of water, groundwater, the Colorado River, and the snowpack on the Sierras. With an exceptional amount of rain and snow, these three sources will fill up again. But meteorologists are calling for another season of weak storms. Disneyland Park and California Adventure add a new sixth tier of ticket prices for in-demand dates. The new ticket prices went into effect Monday, October 25th, raising single-day park tickets to $164 during expected high-capacity dates like spring break and holiday weekends. The increase is to meet new budget requirements and to help spread visitation numbers throughout the year. Disney last raised their ticket prices before the closure in 2020 due to the coronavirus pandemic. Wow, I'm really regretting not getting an annual pass. Yeah, ticket prices keep going up and my bank account keeps going down. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Gigi on the street. This week, she's got something a little different for us. Are you almost done with your book? What do you mean you're not done? It's a page and a half. I'll give you the answer. Don't let anybody open your bag. Besides, we have to go to the streets and ask people what their best Halloween costume was. The streets are waiting. Hi, I'm here with... Sam. And Charlotte. Sam and Charlotte. Best Halloween costumes you guys have ever done. I was Spider-Man when I was a little kid. I made it out of soccer socks and masking tape. Mine has to either be the Heffalump costume that my mom made for my sister and I, like way back, or the Astrid Hofferson costume that I made. Hi, I'm here with... Jenna. Renee. Jenna Renee, the best Halloween costumes you guys have ever done. Um, I dressed up as a mild sauce from Taco Bell in sixth grade because Taco Bell is my favorite food. Ooh. And I love mild sauce. Love that. Um, when I was six, I was a Pegasus. <laughs> Yes, that's awesome. One of one of a kind. Yeah. Hi, I'm here with Andres. Andres, what was your best Halloween costume? I think my best Halloween costume, honestly, so a couple years ago, um, I gathered with two of my friends, and we were trash bags, and she was a trash can. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> I know we didn't see as much of the streets as we usually do. That's because of a little rain. But that didn't stop us from getting all the answers we usually do from Biolans on campus. So, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Gigi on the Street. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, please DM me at GigiFiero1 or go to Biola Eagle Vision's Instagram at BiolaEV. Now we're getting back to your Eagle Vision news. 
Thanks, Gigi. If you're having a hard time keeping up with national and global news, Olivia Yatuma has got you covered. Then a story on Ivan Penn's visit to campus from reporter Stephanie Guevara. Thanks, Emily. Coming up on this week's global news update, TikTok's Ali Abulaban accused of murder, the ongoing investigation regarding Brian Laundrie's cause of death, and North Carolina couple linked to 30-year-old cold case. TikTok's Ali Abulaban, age 28, was accused of shooting his estranged wife, along with the man she was with, by installing a hidden listening device on his five-year-old daughter's iPad. He pleaded not guilty on Monday to two counts of murder. He is also charged with special circumstance allegations of multiple killings, meaning that prosecutors can seek the death penalty if he is convicted. Prosecutors say Abulaban's wife asked him to move out of their apartment on October 18th following a pattern of alleged domestic violence incidents. He is being held without bail and has since received an order requiring him to stay away from his daughter. Brian Laundrie's remains were recovered on October 20th, but the results of his autopsy were inconclusive. His remains have since been sent to a forensic anthropologist, but whether or not Laundrie's cause of death will be determined remains unclear. North Carolina husband and wife Scott Gordon Poole and Robin Lynn Byram were arrested due to their connection to a 30-year-old cold case, highlighting an infant whose body was stuffed in a trash can in the Outer Banks. After an advanced DNA analysis, the couple was deemed the parents of the infant and have since been arrested and charged with concealing the birth of a child, which is a first-class felony. More charges will likely follow pending further investigation. Times alternative energy reporter Ivan Penn discussed the topics of justice, truth-telling, and ethics to the Department of Digital Journalism and Media and at Chapel. At the Chapel the Viola Hour, students ask questions on how to distinguish good and bad news and how to gain experience for after college. Experience in general is highly valued in the journalism business. So, you know, we always encourage people to get as much as they can. And one of the best places to start is right on the college campus. After his talk, Ivan Penn's wife, September, gave a sneak peek of a musical performance for a Friday morning's chapel. And leave you, the Lord make his face to shine upon you. September is a musical director and a vocalist, and Ivan plays the trumpet. His uh, instrument of worship is the trumpet. Mine is my vocal cords. So when we come together and blending and harmonizing unto God, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful moment. Yeah. Ivan and September will be back at Biola in February. This is Stephanie Guevara with Eagle Vision News. I actually got to meet Mr. Penn, and he was so inspirational. His speech to his 19-year-old self really touched me. Yes, I loved getting coffee with him and hearing all his stories from his years of experience. Mm -hmm. It was such an amazing time. Yeah. Next up, Sophia Sylvester has the weather. Let's see if we have one more week of sunshine. Thanks, Marlena. This week, Northern California saw a storm hit that brought flooding, mudslides, and power outages for many in the state. Behind me, you can see Kent Field, California, a little north of San Francisco, which experienced a lot of the flooding. The storm continued down California's coast until it hit us here in La Mirada, bringing some rain on Monday. However, the storm has passed on and we'll be experiencing some warmer temperatures before the end of the week. It was a brisk fall day here in La Mirada. We had a chilly morning at 53 degrees before it warmed up to 67 this afternoon and it'll drop back down again to 53 degrees this evening. You can also see that the sunset is happening earlier and earlier, which means that daylight savings time is right around the corner. We're also seeing a drop in temperatures across the country. The Northwest and the Northeast are both experiencing temperatures in the 40s and 50s. We also still have a little bit of a hot pocket down in the central states that are experiencing temperatures in the 80s and the low 90s. This week in La Mirada, we're going to see some temperatures in the 80s up to 85 on Thursday and down to 83 on Friday with some sun. But this weekend, it'll be getting a little bit chillier down in the low 70s and the high 60s with some cloudy skies continuing into Monday. So if you're planning on doing any trick-or-treating this weekend, you might want to bring a coat and some warm apple cider. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Sophia. And I understand you have a helper this week on set? That's right. This is Coco, our resident weather dog. She's dressed as a pumpkin today. She just came on set to wish everyone a happy Halloween. 
So cute. She's definitely got me in the Halloween spirit. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> you missed Jeff on the desk this week, so now he's back in his element reporting from the stands. Jeff. Since early 2020, fans have been forced to watch games and matches on their screens, but now they keep back in the stands. <laughs> It has been almost a year since Chase Gymnasium has heard the roar of the crowd. But last Thursday, the Lady Eagles got to play with some extra supporters. The Biola women's volleyball team had their 18th match against Academy of Art. It was almost too easy for the Eagles as they had a clean sweep against the Knights winning 3-0. They are currently 12-7 and, and have won their last five of six games. So if you're a fan who wants to support the Eagles volleyball or basketball teams, all you have to do is get a ticket, wear your mask indoors, and show your school spirit. As the season goes on, the teams hope to have more and more supporters filing into the bleachers. Playing in front of fans just adds a little more excitement to the games. This is Jeff Wilson reporting for Eagle Vision News. Back to you. Thanks, Jeff. We're now joined by Chris Sharpentier. Chris, in your professional opinion, what are your top favorite five Halloween movies? Well, Emily, I'm really glad you asked. There are a variety of Halloween-themed movies to watch on the upcoming holiday, so here are a few of my recommendations. First off, if you're looking for the more comforting side of the holiday, look no further than It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown, a classic children's special that includes the entire Peanuts gang. With its fun humor, beautiful animation, and gorgeous music, it might be a good break from the typical horror movies you'll see around this time of year. Next, there's much to love in the holiday crossover of The Nightmare Before Christmas. Fans of this movie tend to watch this film on both Halloween and Christmas, since it works perfectly within both times of the year. On top of that, it boasts an iconic soundtrack that is sure to have you singing along. Next, we have Halloween, the famous slasher film that introduced the world to Michael Myers, the famous horror icon that still has films coming out to this day. If you're looking for a fun, classic horror film to watch with a group of friends this holiday, you can't go wrong with this 1978 classic. Finally, if you're looking for a more comedic take on the slasher genre made popular by Halloween, Scream is the perfect movie for you. Taking place within a setting where all the characters have watched slasher films extensively, Scream provides a new take on the subgenre while also being a worthy addition to it. Thanks, Chris. I'm not a huge horror movie fan, but I'll make sure to check those out. Yes, and if you're looking for a TV show to watch, Midnight Mass on Netflix is one that I highly recommend. Thank you for watching, and be sure to check us out on social media at Biola EV. I'm Marlena Lang. And I'm Emily Coffey. Happy Halloween.